data files are the files which are going to be on a file system obviously file system supports files and directories let's talk a bit about file system we have different types of file systems for example unix file system ext2 ext3 ntfs in case of windows operating system each operating system can have its own type of file system when we purchase a brand new hard disk in order to make use of that hard disk eventually we are going to keep a files and directories on a particular hard disk with the help of an operating system for operating system to make use of that particular portion of hard disk hard disk must be formatted such a way that sons operating system can make use of that portion that's what we call different partitions we can create it one of those partitions like in case of linux operating system we use the file system type is ext3 that's what the file system type that we create on linux operating system in case of windows we normally choose ntfs file system so that your windows operating system can understand that particular portion of hard disk to manage that particular storage by keeping files and directories now talking about how many database files are required it changes version to version not majorly there is a change prior to 10g from 10g prior to 10g the minimum database files are required to create a database is two we need to have two files from 10g onwards they have introduced a new different file from 10g onwards let us look at those files system table space now there is a new term called table space table space is a logical representation of physical files that we call data files logical representation from database front the physical aspect of these files which are physical files residing on disk 1 or disk 2 are tagged to a particular table space so the naming convention for these table spaces are like system table space that means system table space is a logical unit which represents a physical aspect that is available on a hard disk for example system table space can have one data file or multiple data files depends on how we create it so there is always relationship between the physical aspect of it and logical aspect of it when you we connect to the database we refer logical aspect of it eventually the logical aspect of it is going to work with the physical aspect of it in order to get the required information <coughs> the second type <coughs> the second database file is undo table space now let's look at system before we get to undo system table space is responsible for storing metadata information of a database what do you mean by metadata metadata is nothing but data talking about data for example we have employee table employee table is having a structure the table should contain employee number employee name social security number maybe address so this is the structure of a particular table called employee table that structure is called metadata which is going to be stored in the system table space actual data is going to store in some other table space user table space that we are going to say in a minute so what is our understanding about the system system table space is completely dedicated for oracle oracle is going to manage this when we create a table oracle is responsible for inserting all the structure of the table into system table space when we modify it oracle is responsible for modifying that structure 
in system table space. So entire metadata information is available in system table space. Next one is undo. As name says undo, what do we mean by undo? We have done something. Now we change our mind. We don't want to save it. We don't want to do that way. Then you say undo it. For example, in Winword, we'll type something. We want to put the way it was and then we say control Z. By pressing control Z, it's going to put the way it was. This is what we call a transaction. What do we mean by transaction? Transaction is nothing but we initiate some kind of modification. Either you, you have two choices. We, either we can say you commit it by saying commit, you are making it permanent those changes. Before committing, we have an option to say roll back. Don't make that permanent. Keep the way it was. That's what we call transaction is done. In order to make sure the transaction is done, we have to either issue commit or roll back. From where it is going to roll back? From undo table space. So undo table space is going to support roll back operations. The next one is a sysox which got introduced in version 10G. If you look at the name, system auxiliary table space. Whatever we are keeping it right now in sysox, it used to be part of the system itself. Our system is so busy maintaining all the information which is required for Oracle database. Oracle Corporation introduced sysox from 10G to relieve some load from system and keep it in sysox table space. So what kind of information is available in sysox table space? This is responsible for holding workload repository. So what kind of workload we have on a particular database? Oracle has a mechanism. Every so often, it's going to capture performance related statistics. And then that will get saved to sysox table space from 10G onwards. So what contains sysox? Workload repository information is put in sysox table space. Later on, if a DBA wants to know how database is performing as far as performance concerned with respect to three major resources, CPU, memory and storage. All this information can be extracted from sysox table space by using tools like AWR report or ADDM report and stuff like that. That we are going to look in performance tuning sessions. So these are the three major mandate table spaces that are required for a database to be created. Is that mean can we manage and maintain the database by having only these three table spaces? Not really. Definitely we'll be having a lot more table spaces than this. These all are bare minimum table spaces that are required for a database. Well, let's talk about readlog files. As we just discussed a little bit about readlog files, it stores all the changes in the form of change vectors, in the form of change records. Now we are talking about two things. One is change vector, the other one is change record. Change record will contain multiple change vectors. Each change can have multiple change vectors. For example, let's say I'm updating a table. There is old information, which is for undo. There is a latest information that is for actual TBF files. So these two are two change vectors. Combining will have a change record that eventually will get saved to read log files. This information is required during recovery process. Now, we talked about changes to database DBA files. We are talking about changes to read log files. So that means changes are saved to data files and read log files. 
what's the difference <coughs> Changes to data files are in the form of rows and blocks. Now we are talking about Oracle block. It's a new term. At the granular level, data will be stored in the form of Oracle blocks. Each Oracle block will contain multiple operating system blocks. So each block should support multiple rows in general whereas the information that is being sending to read log files containing only change vectors it is very small in size if you look at oracle database block size by default it is 8k you can have 2k 4k k means kilobytes 8k 16k or 32k so that means 32k block size contains more rows in it, it depends upon the database design it, it it all depends on how the row length and all that there are many other factors will get involved while deciding a database block size now we are trying to understand the difference of the data which is being written to the DBA files, which is being written to read log files. When we are talking about read log files, it only talking about the change, not the entire row. Whereas the information that is being written to DBA files, it's entire row, not even row, it's a block. So always it reads in multiple blocks, writes back into multiple blocks. The information that is being written to the DBA files are required for retrieval process while users are connected to the database. The information that is being put into read log files required in case of recovery. This is the difference between these two. Now, control files. Minimum one control file is required. What is the recommended one? In general, in any production environments, we'll try to keep minimum two or three files in order to protect from failures. Maximum it can support up to eight control files. That's a big number. So let's say if we are going with three different control files, we want to keep it on three different disks in order to support any disk failures, stuff like that talking about data files as we just discussed minimum three data files are required from 10g onwards definitely will be having much more than three because application design really di dictates how many table spaces would like to have it that's a part of database design in order to achieve a good load balancing environment as far as IO operations concerned so basically we need to have system undo and sysox now how many read log files are required minimum we need to have two so we'll see later on why minimum two are required